everybody. Hello. Welcome. We're so glad to have you on. This is Love the Real Hills. My name is Chris. And I'm Renee. And we love God. We love people. We love life. We love work. We love career. And we love hard, too. We really yeah. do. We really do. And we love being with you today. We want to just thank you for stopping in. We have a great show for you today. We have a great discussion that's lined up. Before we even get started, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to ask you to hit that follow button. I'm going to ask you to hit that share button. And I want you to get ready. Jump in the comments. we got a big show today. And we're going to jump right in in a moment. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about insecurity. Uh-oh. Yes. Battling insecurity. Battling insecurity. Yeah, this is a big one. This and is this, a big one. This is by request only. This is a this, requested this is, topic. This is a topic that we've received from everywhere and from so many different people. And so we don't want to waste another moment. We want to jump right in. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I'm going to talk about how do you battle insecurity. Higher Level Denver is here. Join us as we go to the higher level. Higher Level Denver with Dr. Chris Hill. But I'm about to get real free. Free in my mind. Free in my body. Free in my past. Free in my future. I need a free person to give God a free praise right here. We are friends of God, friends of man, and friends of humanity. Transform your life. Find your voice. Get ready to roar. Join Dr. Chris Hill at Higher Level Denver this Sunday at 10 a.m. Higher Level Denver at the Roar Center, 3035 South Parker Road, Aurora, Colorado, 80014. See all that we're doing on the web at www.higherleveldenver.org. And we're back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, let's jump right into this crazy, but yet very insightful topic we're going to discuss is battling insecurities. And this is a big deal. I mean, this is one of our number one requested things that people wanted us to talk about. And it's one of the issues that I'm glad to talk about because when you're working with people, you're working with the public, very often what you're seeing is a lot of insecurity on display. Insecurity mm. in two in two shoes. Walking around, living life insecure. So we first thing we want to do, the first question they ask is how do I define insecurity? Okay. Okay. And my definition is a little bit different than most people, but I define insecurity as the result of where you were dropped. Dropped on your head? Dropped on your head, dropped <laughs> on your heart, <laughs> dropped in your expectations, <laughs> dropped in your dreams, yeah. dropped in the promises that someone, it's a drop. When we're, when we're anatomizing somebody's psyche and really spiritually and emotionally evaluating, we're trying to go back and see, okay, where's the drop? What, what was the disappointment? When I say drop, I mean the disappointment I mean the promise that somebody made to you. I mean the commitment. Very often it can be a parental drop or a parent or a guardian or someone who was in that position where you trusted them and they, they dropped you. And as a result of that drop, you're now living your life in, as in some areas where you are always braced for the drop. Mm. It's like you're bracing for the hit. Okay. Somebody tells you that they love you and instead of your heart melting, you're, you're putting that shell on because someone else told me they love me and they dropped me. And so from here on out, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be as strong as I possibly can be because I'm actually insecure. Mm. And very often it's it's living a life that is just you're waiting for the other shoe to drop and you're waiting because you've been dropped. You're waiting for it to go wrong. So you're on the job. You're doing great. But you're insecure on the job because you were doing great at the other job and they still came and laid you off. And so now you're insecure. You're in a new relationship. You got past the old relationship. You're in a new relationship. But here you are. You're still 
looking at that person funny, you know, and you need their, all their passwords and you need you need all their passwords. You need access to their phone. You need access to their pager. I mean, <laughs> you need access to everything. And because you're still insecure as a result of what you've been through. And this is one of the things that is such a, a challenge for us. OK, this is such a challenge for us is because when you're insecure, you're we don't allow people into our lives. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's, so when we're going back, we're, we're looking we're looking for the drop. We're looking. We're actively seeking. OK. What happened? Maybe you were four years old and someone was supposed to come up and, and, and take you out. Someone was supposed to. You, maybe you had a parent that had promised to be at your games and you're looking up in the stand and they're never there. And that that can create a root of insecurity within you. So now you feel like I can't count on people. I can't trust people. I got to do everything on my own. And so insecurity can hide under the guise of independence. Mm. Oh, that's good. OK, insecurity can hide under the cover of independence where we are. I'm an independent person. I don't need nobody. Uh, no, you're just insecure. And if we if we really go back and look at it, we'll find out where that root is and we can fix it because human beings are not designed to be independent. Mm. OK, life is a team sport. He's hitting a lot of points here. <laughs> no, we just started. It's, you know, I hear so many people tell I'm an independent woman. I don't need no man. I'm an independent. I can do this by myself. No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't. You were not designed to live alone. We're not designed. Now, I don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert. I don't care what how you've been that way. My wife is an extreme extrovert, and I'm actually an introvert. But I, you know, my job has taught, taught, taught me how to have extroverted skills. But either way, regardless of how you recharge, whether you recharge with people or you recharge in silence and alone time, that, that's, that's all the definition of an introvert or an extrovert is. It doesn't matter. You're not designed to live by yourself. You're not designed to be totally independent. And so when I hear people singing that song, all I'm hearing is this is the melody of insecurity. And then I'm asking the question, who dropped you? And when? How early was it? How late was it? Because as a result of that drop, now you you've shelled up and you built these walls. And now the walls that you built to protect yourself have now become the walls that imprison you. And so when God sends you people into your life to team up with, to work with. I mean, and and they run into all these walls of your own insecurity and you pushing them away. I don't need no help. I, I can do it. Are you okay? I'm fine. Then why are you bleeding from both your eyes? Okay. And I'm fine. I got, I got this. No, no, you're just insecure. And if we go back and see where the drop was, mm. we can diagnose that, fix it, so that you can live a life that's more fulfilled, okay? Now, so it's not like God wants us to be weak. No. Okay? Mm -hmm. But he wants to be on a team. Because life is a team sport. It is. I agree. How early did your daughter walk? Ooh, early. Earlier than most. How, do you remember? She was younger than... When's her birthday? April, mm -hmm. March, February, <laughs> January, December, November. So she she started walking about ten months. Ten months. Okay. Usually ten ten, ten and a half nine months. months. Some nine. people's baby walks at six months. You know, uh, that's a big like walks by themselves. Well, they start bouncing. She started all that way early, but fully walking by herself in her shoes, hold my hand, she can walk. Right. Walk across, you know, right. by herself. Ten was months. about ten months. My my boys, one was nine months, mm -hmm. and the other one was, you know, 11 months. He's lazy, okay? 
Uh, <laughs> still lazy. Lazy. <laughs> okay. Um, but my point is, have you ever seen an animal get bur- born in the wild? Yes. They walk. Instantly. In minutes. Everything else in nature is born swimming, running. <laughs> feeding itself. Or walking. And in most cases, they can feed, start feeding themselves quite instantly. Uh, birds have to be in the nest. It takes a while for them to get there. They're one of the few. But even that, that is weeks. Only the human species is just completely born helpless for like for almost a year. Because we're born to be interdependent. Mm. We're created to be interdependent. We're created to be to live within the confines of community. Okay, baby whale comes out swimming and eating fish. Mm. Okay, giraffe, them long legs work in 10 minutes. Okay, <laughs> baby calf yeah. comes out mooing and ready to eat some grass. Okay, and if, if, it's, if, if its mother is there, it'll drink the milk. But if not that mother, there's others in its community that it can also nurse from. This is something that's really, really different about the human species is that we're created to be interdependent, but what do you do when the system that you're counting on and the network that you're born into drops you? Drops you. Disappoints you. They don't show up. They're not there. They're not helpful. Maybe they're toxic. Maybe they're abusive. Mm. And this drop creates legitimate insecurity. That's one of the things I want to say here is that when you're battling insecurity, sometimes your insecurity is justified because you got hurt. You were injured. It was painful. Your pain is real. Mm. Okay? But we can't live in the pain of our past to the point where we hijack our own future. And that's why we have to deal with our insecurities. That's why we have to deal uh, with the language of our insecurity and begin to rewrite the narrative. Our own our own inner narrative has to change our own how we talk to ourselves and how we look at things has to change if we're going to walk past insecurity and then walk into some help. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Okay. how do I identify? This is another question we got is, how do I identify if I'm being insecure? Oh, I got something. You want to jump on? Okay. Um, I was, as you were talking, I was starting to write stuff down because this is a big one, especially Huge. for women. I can speak from a women's perspective on identifying. I work with people all the time. I work with kids too. Mm -hmm. And so I can see those insecurities starting to develop even when they're younger. Mm. And so I've, I've kind of structured my way of interaction to kind of like cancel out that beginnings of insecurity from when they're younger um, but with the people I'm dealing with who are older and adults now right. and, you know, going through life and job and family and work and, you know, life, um, it's a little harder to cancel those insecurities out. And um, but I have figured out a few ways to identify. OK, um, first one, the constant need for individual attention. Wow. Um, say, that, I, say that again. Constant need for individualized attention. Right. This is the person who doesn't want to be in a group setting. Mm-hmm. They not because they're an introvert. Right. Because they want all this one-on-one time. Because in group settings, you discuss amongst the group. You. You wow. you talk about the good, the bad amongst the group. So other people are privy right. to areas where you may or may not be um, as efficient or where you may have some downfalls. Okay. Um, they're OK if it's all positive. Right. 
But because there may be points where there may be some constructive criticisms yeah. and things like that, yeah. um, they really would prefer individualized attention, individualized communication, individualized lized, um, correction, mm -hmm. um, individualized um, it, anything that may point out an area where they may have a weakness or an insecurity. Wow. They rather not do it. So these are the people who every time, you know, in the work world, I do, I have to do a lot of co conference calls and Zoom meetings. Yeah. They, they don't want to be on the Zoom meeting and turn on their camera. Okay. That's an insecurity. You feel like that's insecurity. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, these are the people in an in-person meeting. They they will try their best to get out of it. Mm. They they will come up with any excuse. Oh, I can just submit my information, you know, mm -hmm. um, that way nobody else has to see. Right. If there is a problem, it can be addressed directly with them. These these are the people who in like team sports. Mm -hmm. They don't handle when the coach like calls them out on their mess up. Right. You miss the free throw. Right. Not the team. Right. You miss the free throw shot. Okay. Get it together. Work on your form. Bend your knees. They don't like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that's an insecurity. And a secure person accepts both the constructive criticism right. and the applause. Right. Wow. They can they can take both uh -huh. and they handle it well and they don't take it as a personal attack. Right. They take it as a learning experience or right. a way to growth. Wow. Um, that's another way. That's another way. Now, um, let, before you move on, that, that's because that's huge. That's that's a big deal. OK, what, which, which part in, in terms of because we deal with so many people that they can't take. If you try to speak to them within a group and it's not a negative, it's not a positive way. Hey, if you say, hey, that was pretty, that was, yeah, we need to fix that in our area. They will kind of they will totally it. withdraw. Yeah. And they taking it as an it's, attack. It's an attack. Not an area for improvement. Not, hey, this this could have been done better. Right. What can we do next time to make it better? No, they take it as I'm a failure. I yeah. ruined. I'm bad. I've done this wrong. They this go in and I wrote it down. Uh -huh. They spiral into this thing of I did it wrong. Right. I failed. And it's like, I'm just pointing out the fact that we made a mistake. Right. We can fix this. How can we do it better? Not you're a failure as a whole. They take it on to them themselves as this is identity. See, and, and to my thing, that's that's trained behavior. Mm -hmm. That that they're not just hearing your your voice or your criticism or your constructive criticism. It joins the chorus. It joins this Greek chorus of voices of past parents, past relationships, of uh, what other people have said. And it, they, then we're in this spiral. And, and as a leader or trying to work a team or trying to run a business, you're like, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? You, you, you're Because they will withdraw into themselves or sometimes they'll come out fighting. They'll either fight or attack back. Right. Or they withdraw and quit. Mm hmm They withdraw and give up. Right. Or they withdraw and cry. Oh, God help us, Jesus. This the, is what happens. Yeah, the crying thing. I can't take it. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't take it when they start crying. Me either. I like... That's why I have HR. There's no crying in baseball. Okay, there's HR. no crying in baseball. I can't take it. HR handles that. <laughs> but I mean, but what we're seeing, babe, we're seeing is it's one of their things is it's not their fault. 
it's not their fault they got that dropped. they were dropped. They but, were dropped. But they do have to take responsibility on how they handled it. And we'll get to that later okay. on when we deal, deal with identifying the insecurity and how did they heal from it. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll get to that later. Because in the next segment, I want to deal with, because you dealt with one aspect of insecurity, uh, but I also want to deal with the people who crave attention. Well, that that's next on okay. my on okay. my list. I only did one. I have like six. Okay, so we got to get to six ways to right. identify. We got to we got to take a quick break. <laughs> we got to take a quick break, and please take a moment to subscribe, to like, and to share this conversation with somebody else. We need you. You're going to help us with this algorithm. You're going to help us to get our platform to the next level, so that more people can start to get this kind of information. It really helps us when you do those small things. When we'll be right back after this. Join Dr. Chris Hill at Higher Level Denver. Inspirational, motivational, and elevational. At Higher Level, journey with us in reaching your highest potential in God. Because when you go up, I go up too. Huh? When you get a promotion, I get a promotion too. Huh? When you go higher, I go. We started at the bottom now where? Here, everybody's going up. I need somebody who knows I'm going up. I'm going up with my family. I'm going up with my children. I'm going up with my church. We're all going up. Join Dr. Chris Hill at Higher Level Denver this Sunday at 10 a.m. Higher Level Denver at the Roar Center, 3035 South Parker Road, Aurora, Colorado, 80014. See all that we're doing on the web at www.higherleveldenver.org. And we're back. We're back. Let's we're go. back and we're talking about how to identify if I'm being insecure. This, this is getting good. It's good. It's getting good. And the first one I said is the constant need for okay. individualized attention. So these are signs. These are markers that you're insecure. That you may need to You may be battling check. some insecurity. Yeah. Check. Okay. Let's check it out. The next thing is the continuous comparison of yourself to others. Okay. And it's I believe there's there is a little good in comparing a little bit like dang that person is awesome. I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. What are they doing that I'm not so I can be as great as them or I can achieve some of the things they've achieved cuz those are in my goal. That is totally fine. But right. comparison in the way of where you're internalizing mm. that this person is this way and I'm not. Gotcha. And I suck. Mm -hmm. And I'm a loser. Like taking it to the whole other extreme and comparing yourself with others. And, and especially in the sense of comparing yourself with someone whose experiences mm. are well beyond yours. Wow. Well, they've they've. Ex Experience things on a whole other level than you have. Mm -hmm. They've experienced things to a greater, you know, compass than you have. Okay. And you're comparing yourself. It's like a three-year-old comparing themselves to a 30-year-old. Right. That's what I mean. Because this three-year-old hasn't been through right. enough life. Right. Do you see what I mean? Right. And so it's it's not even a good comparison to have. Okay. Like, why am I comparing comparing myself if I am, let's just say I'm 22, fresh out of college, just starting life. Right. Um, I have my degree. I'm trying to find that career path that I want to go on. And, but then yet I'm going to compare myself to a 45 year old woman mm -hmm. who has gone through her career um, moved up in career in life, has a family with children, has own ownership, you mm -hmm. know, run businesses. Mm -hmm. Why would the comparison? It's just not, it's, it's not, it's a not a good, comparison. it's not a fair. And mm -hmm. so when you are comparing yourself to people who you don't even know their right. life, right? You don't know their struggles. Right. And that's you a, haven't that's walked a, in their shoes. You don't understand why the they're where they are. Of social media. Yes. Is we get to see everybody's highlight reel. Yeah. Okay. Very few people post their low moments. No. Not unless they want to be a meme. 
You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to be a meme crying. Okay. Um, so for the most part, people put out there what's good stuff. Yeah. But if you have that, that insecurity that causes you to compare, then you're comparing without all the information. Yes, without all the information. The, uh, the next thing, then, too, I have okay. is... I like this. Retreating in times of competition. Okay, break that down. It's when... Here is your time to shine. Yeah. You've been given a platform. You've been given an audience. You've been given a stage. You've been given, you know, an opportunity to shine. Right. And... It, there may be other colleagues, there may be other friends, there may be other family members who also have that opportunity mm -hmm. at the same time. And you'll choose, knowing this is something you're passionate about, you choose to retreat. Right. You'll retreat from it. Right. And everyone's like, well, how come you didn't do A, B, and C? Right. You're good at that. Right. And you're like, oh, no, I don't want to. Uh, and you're like, and it just throws you off because you're like, hmm, that's kind of odd, you know, like. It's a red flag of insecurity. Yeah. Like, so the you're, job, you typically do this and you're, why wouldn't you. There's a job opportunity. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take the and job? they didn't apply. Yeah. Um, and it's like something they're great at. In and their they have house. It, They have experience in their, but there's. They, they read the article or the job description <laughs> or they sat down and found out there are 25 others applying. Got it. And now, oh, yeah, let me, let me not go for it. There's, there's too much competition. Right. That insecurity can cause you to retreat and you didn't even try. Yeah, without even trying. And that's a, that's a definite red flag. How many times have you said no how many times have you said no for somebody else mm. rather than put yourself in a position where they could say no is you had the opportunity to fill out the application. You didn't, they had money for school. You didn't apply. Uh, they was hiring down, they hiring down there. Okay. And you don't go. It's that you don't want to hear the no, right? Got you it. don't want to ever hear a no. You uh, don't want to ever, ever hear again. ever. You don't ever want to hear <laughs> your second place. Right. Wow. You don't ever want to hear, wow. sorry, not at this time. Right. You don't ever want to hear, no, not today. It's real. That's an insecurity. No, that's real. You have to be able to receive yeses and nos. Wow. Likewise, in life. Like, you're not, no one's going to go through life getting yeses to everything. Wow. You're, it's just not going to happen. It's an unrealistic expectation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just unrealistic to even think that you're going to go through life and always get a yes, 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 yes. Right. Everything will be a yes. Right. There's, there's going to be some no's. There's got to be some no's. There's going to be some turn downs. Got to be. There's going to be some, yeah, not today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to happen. There, that's going to happen. Right. And so I, I notice people who have insecurity, uh -huh. like who struggle with insecurity, they struggle with ever hearing anything outside of a yes. Great. Awesome. Yes. Right. So the another, I have another one. one. I'm glad. Go ahead. Is your inability to produce even in areas where you are usually wow. and naturally wow. a producer. Wow. That's that's great. That's great. This is the person I, I I'm gonna use like, you know, because I'm in the creative room, I'll use this is the person that is a known stage singer for productions. They yes. do Broadway right. shows. And when it comes time to audition for mm -hmm. that show. It just, they don't show up. They crack. Mm -hmm. They off key. Mm -hmm. They sound tone deaf. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Right. Like, you know, you've seen this person, but... When it, when it comes down to they, this is when they have to do it. Right. This is your moment to produce. Right. They can't. They're choked by their own insecurity. Choked. They're, they're going back in time to that parent that said, I don't even know why you're trying to sing. You can't even really sing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in the other setting, we, they're amazing. 
But when they get back and that, that light goes on, those floodlights come on and they got the three people at the table and they have the mic in their hand, there's an opportunity and then they're choked by their own insecurity. And, and even though they didn't retreat, it, it, they didn't come out. In they the they best. couldn't perform. They gotcha. couldn't produce as they normally would. That's deep. They couldn't produce it. That's crazy. Yeah, I see that a lot. I, I see, see that it a lot. lot. It's it's the person that goes for the interview and then chokes in the interview, and we practice for three hours. Exactly. You know, and exactly. they had every answer. It's the person that has taken all of the the. Taking all of the pre the pre SAT and, and scored the high, classes, right? Scored high. <laughs> and okay, then, got a perfect score almost, and then they go and take the real test, right? And they fail it. Freeze. Yeah. Okay. That's that's insecurity. Yep. My last one. All right, please. I'm this sure there good. are many more. But There's these so are many just more. the ones these I are, could think of off the top of my head. These are good. Um, needing. Constant over reassurance. Mm. If they don't clap all the time, mm. you start to spiral into the did I do it right? Right. Did I mess it up? Right. Wow. Did I do it wrong? If you don't get a clap immediately mm -hmm. after your production, mm -hmm. You're like, oh my God, did I mess it up? Oh my God, do they hate me? Oh my God, am they thinking I did it wrong? That you just start to like, mm -hmm. oh my God, they hate me. Oh my God, they're gonna kick me out. Oh my mm -hmm. God, they're gonna fire me. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose right. my job. Oh my God, um, they're gonna report me. Oh my, you just start going to all of the worst things that it could possibly be, and it's, mm -hmm. and it could be like you did the job good. Right. There's no need. Right. To say anything because you did what was required. Exactly. But that insecurity will tell, take you in this tailspin if you don't hear mm -hmm. the words, great job right. every single time. Or that was awesome. Right. Thanks for hanging that picture on the wall. <laughs> Thanks for taking out the trash. You're Thanks the best trash taker outer yeah. in the history of if the world. If they don't get an applause right. at everything they do. Clap it up then they start to spiral in their mind oh and God. go down this rabbit hole right. of darkness right. and horrible down talking of their self. Deep. You know what I mean? That inner, that inner voice. Yeah, it's the bad one. It's the ugly one mm -hmm. that just speaks negative. It doesn't speak wow. life. It speaks death. It speaks negativity. Um, it, it's just not good. And so I, I see that a lot with people mm -hmm. like, you, you know, you may give them an assignment on the job and they, here's the assignment. Just make sure it's done by Friday. Right. You check on Friday. It's done. Great. But if you don't email them and yeah. say, oh, Susan, this was awesome. Um, the first thing on the list that you did was amazing. And the third thing was even better in the first, second thing was great. Thank you so much for completing all of your duties and tasks that are a part of your job description. Right. Then they're like, oh my God, I did all this work. Right. Did anybody notice? They didn't. Oh man, she must didn't like it. Right. You know? Oh my God, are they going to fire me? Oh my God, I didn't hear anything. Right. Oh my God. And it's like, oh my God, no. <laughs> You just did your job. It's okay. See, and it's it. I can almost always track it back to a parent. Yeah, probably to, to a mother. Most likely a father, grandmother, grandfather, somebody who was overly critical. Over critical. Over critical. You didn't feel like you could do anything mm, right. right, and the bed was never neat enough. It wasn't, the sheets weren't folded. They weren't tight enough. Uh, they couldn't bounce a quarter off the sheets. The, the, the room was never tidy enough. The dishes were never clean enough. Your grades were never good enough. And so now you come into adulthood and you're starving for claps. And you likes, need it. Likes. You need it. And if you don't get it, you just... <laughs> Roll over and, and now spiral. spiraling down. Was it? I posted this picture. Did anybody? No one saw it. Did 
No one mentioned my makeup. How no come one. No one's so liking one, my, my party. I mean, it's and we're building a culture. Come on. Of insecure people. We're building a culture that just everybody. I mean, we're insecurity on two legs. Um, and, and to the fact that we, we got to have all kinds of outlandish surgery. We have to have all kinds of outlandish outfits. We have to have constant positive feedback on every little thing we or do. Or shaming. Uh. Or it's considered shaming. Wow. So you it, it becomes... Yeah. If I don't get this, then I'm being shamed. Then I must be being shamed. Yeah, I hate this whole new thing of shaming. It's what do they call it? They call it. They have different ones. They have fat shaming. They have um, identity shaming. They have all these shamings. It's like no one's shaming you. I'm sometimes, just not applauding it. Sometimes we just don't care. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's just no shame. A, See, and this is the thing. When you're not insecure, you make music for you. Yeah. When you're not insecure, you draw for you. Yeah. You paint for you. You write for you. You do it because it's something that, that you, fulfills you. you. And whether, and whether they, they like, it or, like not. it or not, they can like it or lump it. You, yeah. you can kiss my whole left <laughs> leg. Leg, yes, because I'm. I like me. <laughs> I like me, and whether you like me or not, it doesn't matter. It's totally immaterial. It doesn't factor um, into my. To and I want you. Hey, let's all do this together. Um, but I really think that we we've gotten to the place in our culture where we're not building enough personal self esteem. What part of the word self esteem did we leave off? <laughs> It's self. called self-esteem. <laughs> so that means that you need to have some yourself. It has no, and it also means that you are the one who creates it. It it has nothing to do with everyone nothing. else. No nothing. one else can build your esteem Nobody. except for you. Now it comes this, from within. It but this is the thing, is if what if the people who were charged with doing that initially? OK, which is usually our parents or a parental group, because we remember, as we've said, we're not born walking. We're not born able to fend for ourselves. We are born initially dependent on somebody else. And so in those early stages of our existence, if there's no one that says, you know, you're gorgeous. That parental figure that says, hey, you're beautiful, you're smart, you was you was. You is kind, <laughs> you are smart, you are important. We need that initially to build that security. But when you didn't get it, and then you get pushed out into this world of competition and cutthroat and hate and Simon Cowell, and you get pushed out into this world of you, what is, what is my favorite chef? My favorite chef. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, you donut. OK, he gonna call you a donut. And if you don't have enough steam to be able to say, yeah, I'm the best glazed donut God ever. You have to have some personal self-esteem or this life will eat you alive. Yeah, but th there's you have to know you have to create. I say you have to build stepping stones. OK. Um, and systems of prevention. OK, so we're going to get to that. We got it because I want well, my next question is how do I heal from the roots of insecurity? Oh, that's good. And OK, that, that's, that's going to be the next thing we'll talk about when we come back from this break. And we'll be uh, we'll be right back after this. All right. Higher Level Denver is here. Join us as we go to the higher level. Higher Level Denver with Dr. Chris Hill. But I'm about to get real free. Free in my mind, free in my body, free in my past, free in my future. I need a free person to give God a free praise right here. We are friends of God, friends of man, and friends of humanity. Transform your life, find your voice, get ready to roar. Join Dr. Chris Hill at Higher Level Denver this Sunday at 10 a.m. Higher Level Denver at the Roar Center, 
3035 South Parker Road, Aurora, Colorado, 80014. See all that we're doing on the web at www.higherleveldenver.org. And we're back. This is we're Love back. the Real Hills. I'm Chris, and this is... Rinny. And we love you, and this is Love the Real Hills. Please follow, like, subscribe. We, we need your help. We need your help. Those little small things really do help with the algorithm and get us an opportunity to reach more people with really a life-changing and in a lot of ways life-saving message. Th this is something is how do you heal from the roots of insecurity? Now, babe, this is, this is me, okay? Is, this is me. This is, I had to overcome being insecure. My dad walked out on my mom and my sister before I was even born. So when you're rejected from the beginning, you feel dropped. You feel like somebody who should care for you. I mean, he never called. He had no call, no show. He didn't send any money. Birthdays, Christmas, holiday, Father's Day was, I mean, a dark day for me. Every Father's Day, almost till I had kids. Once I had my own sons, I could create different, a different holiday. You know what I'm saying? But I know, I know what it feels like to feel dropped. I felt dropped every birthday. I felt dropped every holiday. I felt dropped even seeing other kids with their fathers was, I mean, was a, it was like a body blow. It was like a body blow. It was, it was a crushing in the heart and it messed with your, my self-esteem. What's wrong with me that my dad doesn't call? What's wrong with me that my dad doesn't care? What must be something wrong with me? And, and that's kind of, and so when other people came into my life and wanting to be father figures and wanting to be, uh, particularly men who would come into my life, I'm always waiting for them to reject me. I was waiting for them. Uh, I remember one of my pastors who I was studying under came in and he was, he was really willing to, to mentor me and to father me in a real, real way. And I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I, mm. I, was still, I was still in my shell of trying to, if I trust this guy and he rejects me too, it's gonna be even worse, <laughs> you know? It was already terrible because of the biological connection, but now here's a spiritual connection. And, and I see, and how, I, how to overcome it is first off, and I had to begin to experience some personal successes myself. Mm. Those personal successes began to build my own confidence and to build my own self-esteem. I began to have to think thoughts like, my dad missed an opportunity to have a relationship with me. Instead of me thinking, I missed an opportunity to have a relationship with him, I had to reset my thoughts on, I am valuable, I'm important. And man, he missed the opportunity to have a relationship with a great son. Boy, you want a son like me, okay? I'm a bad motor scooter. I had to build up my own self-esteem because I didn't have someone else to do it for me. Okay, so let me ask the question. Yeah. Where did the thought come from that it must have been something you did? Because, so I'm just asking for the people in the world like me because mm -hmm. I never, you know, my dad was gone. Yes. My dad wasn't around. He didn't raise me. Right. But I never had the thought in my mind that it was me and, or my fault in any way, shape, or form. That never came across. So where did that thought initially, right. even because you said as a child, right. where does that thought, where did that come from? Was that something someone in your life fed to you? Because... For example, my mother, she never said a negative thing about my father, although right. she could have right. said many negative things. Right, but she did. She never did. Right. So for me, I don't, I, I never had the thought that 
he wasn't around because of something I did mm -hmm. or why did he abandon me? Those thoughts never happened in my mind. Mm -hmm. So did, did this, is this something that may have stemmed from someone else in your world that may right. have spoke these thoughts into your mind? Because I just, you know, sometimes I feel like the way God didn't create us to think of the negative first. Right. So I feel like sometimes some of these things we kind of have to really think back and address is, was it me talking or was I receiving it from an outside source? See, I think sometimes that outside source is the devil. It could be. It, it wasn't, there was no one else saying nothing. Like a grandma or you I, heard your aunties talking. I'm the, that I'm, deadbeat, he just left you I'm talking to your mama. I'm the apple of my family's eye. Okay. Nobody, you know. Everybody else in my family was crazy about me, okay? And very, very positive. And I started doing, you know. Yeah. I was preaching, preaching at, four. at four. And I'm, I'm moving and grooving and moving and scholarship and this and that. So I had a lot of positive feedback. But I think we discount, and this is the problem, is we discount the voice of the devil. Sometimes that negative narrative is from hell itself mm -hmm. that was just that that demonic dark place that dark voice saying see you'll never be nothing because your daddy don't even like you and if you were something your daddy would come along and and that that fomented uh questioning myself mm -hmm. now my reaction to it was to over excel okay i over excelled because i wanted to prove him wrong but even that is not self-esteem. Yeah. Even that is not self-esteem. Exactly. Is uh, having to be on every single honor roll and having to win every single award and having to run for every single office. That, and that was your blanket, your cover for the wall of insecurity that you had built. that was insecurity. Mm -hmm. Because secure people can sit on a couch <laughs> covered with peanut butter okay and call themselves a cracker come on somebody they they you know they, secure people can mm, jump back and kiss themselves they their their wealth to them their worth to themselves is not dependent upon what they do mm. it's dependent on who they are so part of that it, this is when we're talking about becoming secure a lot of this is we have to silence the voice of the enemy. And I think it's a yeah. terrible thing That's where, what I was where we do not acknowledge that there is a demonic enemy and a demonic force. There is a dark world there, and he is the prince of the power Pout of, of the, the air. air. And he will throw things in your head through the air that really don't even make sense. I, it wasn't like my mom ever said anything negative. It wasn't, there was no, no one around me. They kept me covered. I, when you get a call early, they keep you covered. And so I was covered and surrounded by very positive people. But that inner narrative was being dictated by, by an internal force. And until I was able to take every thought into subjection and really, that just means to take that thought and say, hey, is that thought positive <laughs> or good? Or is that thought even mine? Yeah. Where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? I that... call it washing my mind. Okay, talk about that. I, I, when, I was, when I was younger, if anybody said anything negative, I just don't like negative, like negative, directed negativity. Mm -hmm. Like, so you, you you're take construct... ugly. Right. You Think wow, you're this or that. Do you have to point at me when you say that? I, I don't like that. See, I don't like that. Uh, growing up, I grew up in Texas, and <laughs> let me tell you, any Texans out there Texas. from the '90s and terrible school in the '90s, terrible people. Okay, you know we. It's we high side. You know what high side no, is? No, I don't know what high That's side. That's where you kind of you like clown on each other for fun for fun yeah it's like jokes you're just joking 
but we know that. We Capping, high side. Yeah. Cracking, cracking jokes. Snapping. I don't know what they call it everywhere else, but we call high side. High and side. it's just what we do. It it's not personal. It's not to be mean or anything. We just Okay. What's what's happening with your sweater today? You forgot to lint roller it or something? We'll just make up something. You know? I we'll I, just I anything. I got all the lint we, off of it. Exactly. See, you would be an insecure person in Texas. In Texas. You would not last five minutes. I lived in Texas for 16 years. You were grown. And left. Because <laughs> they's mean. They's but, mean but with I, your urshers. I, and your community, Com your community, and your ushers, and ushers, oil. Your the oil, oil, your the hair, oil. her, her, her. No, I got the hell out and of fixing. her. I got out of there as quick as possible. I came fixing. to Colorado with I'm people. Fixing. People is fixing. nice here. People fixing. are nice here. They are nice here. Jesus. I love it. Okay, but yes. but go ahead. Go ahead. So, so you're in this high side in community. Yeah, but then, you know, I would see the kids, like I remember in third grade, I remember this girl, they always talked about her. And Lord knows she did smell bad. She did. Oh. She did. But I always looked at her as a human person. Okay. And I would always say, well, maybe her mom didn't teach her about hygiene. Mm-hmm. So I would I I made her my friend. You made her your friend. I just went over and started talking to her because, you know, I was like, I wouldn't could say I was the, I was popular, but right. I was because I was an athlete. Right. And so a lot of people knew who I was. I didn't know who they were because I didn't really care like that. But if I went to go be her friend, right. then other people would become her would friend. Would consider her. Yes. So what I did is I befriended her. Okay. And she was shocked that I did. So I befriended her so people would leave her alone. And I was like, say something else. Right. Because they thought I was like a fighter because, you know, I was small. So I would just be like, I will pop up off in here, they thought. <laughs> but I really wasn't. Okay. But I could because, you know, taekwondo and all of that stuff. Okay. So, um, <laughs> and brothers and, you know, life. Right. But no. So if... So I befriended her, okay. and so I started being her friend, and I started asking her, you know, about her life at home. And so I found out, like, she had six siblings, mm -hmm. single mom. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they didn't have electric at their house. Wow. They didn't have hot water. Right. They barely, she wore the same, like, three outfits in rotation. Mm-hmm. So I, I found out all of this stuff. So what did you do? So I went home mm -hmm. and I made a basket. Okay. I made a basket for her and I put soap and deodorant and toothpaste and toothbrush and socks. Right. And underwear. How and old, I didn't know underwear, you? you're not supposed to give underwear. How, you know, how old, how old I was were you? a kid. How old were you? I was like third grade. So. Maybe eight, what grade, how, eight, nine, I don't eight know. Or nine. Eight nine. You made her a basket. Yes, and I just gave it to her. I brought it to school and I got in trouble, but I'll tell you why. But I, I gave I brought it to school and gave it to her and I was like, okay. And I went in the bathroom with her and I showed her. I was like, okay, so you use this soap, you wash. I even gave her a face cloth, like a washcloth. Because wow. I didn't know if she had one. Right. Because her story she would tell me. It didn't seem like they had much. Right. And so I was always raised that you help the needy. Mm -hmm. You give to the poor. Right. You know, I grew up in church and we were always, you know, volunteering right. and donating and giving no, stuff. See, babe, that's why I love you because I, so, I don't have a story like that. I, I don't. If you stank <laughs> and you was in school with me, you just stank. Okay. You just stank. I needed Jesus. I got... I found Jesus at four I reasons. have multiple of these but stories. That's, I know but this you do. girl in particular. And that's why it's so good. I remember I came, I started bringing outfits to her so she could be cute and what was in fashion. Because wow. her stuff was still kind of like out of date too mm -hmm. and stuff. So I would bring outfits. I would get in trouble. My mom. <laughs> so you're giving away your clothes. I was giving away like my new stuff. <laughs> Like, I wasn't going in my closet and saying, okay, I don't wear this anymore. Right. I'm, I was giving her the stuff that I would wear. Right. Because, you know, I was taught, you mm. bring your first, you give your best. Right. If you have it, you give it. Right. 
So, but, and my mom wasn't mad at me because I was, she didn't, you know what I'm yeah. saying? She's like, I'm a single mom. Right. She's a single <laughs> I mom. I just paid for them. <laughs> I just brought you that outfit and them shoes. You can't be giving stuff away, you know? So then when I told my mom about the girl, she yeah. was like, oh, okay. So then she was like, okay, let's go get this bag of clothes you don't wear anymore. Right. And let's give those away. You know what I mean? And so anyways, I started you know, she taught me how to do it the right way, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to put my mom in a position where now we're struggling because right. I'm giving away everything she's buying. Right. But um, so I was good. saying that, but I, I just started telling her, she's like, everyone talks about me and they call me stinky. And I was like, well, and I told her, I'm like, yeah, because you kind of smell like, you know, you peed on yourself. Mm -hmm. I had to tell her. Right. And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, did you pee on yourself? She was like, no. She, and I was like, well, you know, my mom told me, you right. know, you have to take a bath every day. Every right. day before you go to bed, you take a bath and you put on clean underwear, mm. you know. And she was like, oh, well, I only have two pairs. Right. And I was like, well, I gave you some. And they're clean. My mom just washed them. <laughs> That's what I told her. You know, I was like, my mom just wash them. They're clean. So you can wear them every day, a different pair, and then you wash them. Right. And then you wear them again after you wash them. And she was like, oh, okay. Like, not only did she not have, but because of the lack, her mom didn't even have the ability or whatever she was going through. That's what I'm saying. To tell her what to do. That, that's what I'm you saying know? is that we're dealing with people who have been dropped. Yes. They have been dropped. Yeah. Their, their parents were deficient. Um, I mean, d you, don't get me started. It, it's like the human species is born dependent upon the parent. And if the parent is deficient mentally, financially, uh, mentally, or spiritually, and most of the people I'm, I'm watching, I'm dealing with, with a generation that has emerged and their parents taught them next to nothing. Nothing. Next to nothing. And then released them out into the world. And then now they're being called, in this situation, stinky. Yeah. And I want we're running out of time. And oh I want to give them some, some <laughs> ways to heal. How to heal. From the insecurity. One thing is I call washing your mind. Wash your mind. This is where no matter what comes through, no matter what comes in your head, if it is not positive, if it's not speaking positivity into you, mm -hmm. you need to take that thought and throw it out. Throw it in the trash throw can. It wash it and replace it with something positive. Yes. The next thing. Another thing that I use, I, I would say, is I create systems to prevent, to prevent other areas of insecurity okay. or, or prevent areas of insecurity that I've dealt with from coming back. So that's like I'm going to build stepping stones and blocks and systems in place that, okay, in the event that this may happen again, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. So if someone does some, some, something that's hurtful or says something hurtful to me, right. I'm, I'm not going to retreat. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let them know. Right. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? You said that. It hurt my feelings. It was kind of hurtful. What, do you, what are you trying to say? Mm -hmm. What is it that you want me to understand by you saying wow. that? Wow. And, and, and so that takes, you know, that... You have to put that system in place. Right. Another way I feel like you can heal from insecurity is addressing your walls of yes. insecurity that you have already, right. addressing them one by one, head on, finding out the root of it, where it came from. Th th then that's, that's mine. Yeah. Coming, find out where it came from, where right. it first stemmed, right. and then addressing it with that person right. that whoever whatever if you even can't, if they're dead if you can't yes it's, and if you can't physically talk right, to them right let's talk to them give it to god let it go and move forward let's identify it yes it, it, i had to identify that that was the voice of the enemy trying to get me to to not value myself yeah and that was keeping me but i want to add this one is allow other people in your life yeah um, you need mentors you need mentors. YouTube is a fantastic resource of mentorship in a bunch of areas. You can learn a lot 
but there's nothing like having people in your life. Yeah. You know, I, I think we're a great supplement. We're a great vitamin, okay? But there's nothing like eating a eating an apple, okay? Uh, apple, uh, an organic apple is going to be much better than the supplements. Now, YouTube is a great resource, and we're here, and, and we love you, and we're for you. You, we want you to ask all the questions you can, but allow people into your life. Allow people into your life that you know, whether they say good or bad, you know they have your best interest Completely. at heart, and they're only going to say it to make you better. Completely. Well, with that being said, Man, guys, we're out of time. It's been a great talk <laughs> about battling by. insecurity. We will see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Click the button. Tell people about it. Send in your comments. Send in your topics that you want us to talk about. Yeah. We are here for it. We're ready. And we will see you next time. Next time. On Love the Real Hills. Love the Real Hills. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.